everyone's doing good. I uh, just today I just wanted to do a video, kind of just doing a desk setup tour. I know a lot of people are doing it online, so I figured why not do one as well. And uh, I just want to show you the equipment I use day to day on my workstation slash gaming rig, and just kind of show you some of the other gear I use for my YouTube channel and just some of my favorite stuff that I use day to day. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I have here is uh, this is just a 40 inch Samsung TV. I use this up here mostly to watch basketball sometimes when I'm sleeping because I have or when I'm laying in my bed. You know, because I have my uh, all my computer and desk set up and everything's in my bedroom because I have just a small kind of studio condo. Um, yeah, so I installed that up there. One cool thing about this TV is that it has the built-in direct TV. So I don't actually have to have any additional boxes or anything like that. It just um, has direct TV software built in, which is kind of cool. Although it is a little bit slow and clunky to use sometimes. So you can see here, the only thing you really need to do is plug in the power and an ethernet cable and you hook up the TV to your network and then do some setup on your main direct TV box and then it's ready to go. And you can use the regular remote that came with it too to control direct TV. So it's kind of sweet, no box necessary. Um, then next up, I guess I should start off with one of my favorite things, which is this monitor. This is the Asus PG278Q. Um, it's a gaming monitor. And you can see I do run Windows 10, which I really like. Um, best operating system out there, in my opinion. But um, yeah, this is the Asus. I, I did a review on most of the stuff here on my desk. This is um, a gaming monitor, but it's a TN panel. So sometimes the off angle colors are a little dark. It's not really picking it up, but it's a little bit annoying to use sometimes when I'm um, editing and leaning back in my chair. Um, I have to sit straight up so I can get the colors right. But the 279Q is coming out soon, which I'm going to hopefully be able to upgrade to. We'll see how that goes. But it's great for gaming. It's super fast, one millisecond response time. Then up here I use a Microsoft. This is a Microsoft LifeCam old camera. I use that mainly just to Skype my dad. And um, I actually use that for my microphone on Battlefield as well so that it works for that because it's just always plugged in and on. And then next up here you see I have uh, my computer speakers are the Vanitu transparent ones. I think they're also known as Vanitu T ones. I, just, I did a review on a full review on those and I just got those a few months ago. They're freaking awesome. They're really, really awesome um, computer speakers. As you can see, what I love about them is they have optical inputs in the back. So what that means is you can just, I can have a digital signal coming from the back of my computer. Here's the, opt this is the optical uh, cable right here. And that output straight from my computer. So it's just a really clean signal and then there's a built-in amp and uh, Basically a digital analog converter built into the speakers. Yeah, they're the best computer speakers I've ever heard for sure. Um, aside from like super high quality monitors, obviously those are going to be even better. But just for desktop speakers and, and listen to a lot of music, man, they're, they're freaking awesome. But anyway, uh, here and they're also on the speaker stands. Uh, I should mention that because a lot of people ask me about those. The speaker stands are made by Wood Technologies and unfortunately they are discontinued. So um, I've tried to find them more pairs of it online when people ask me about it, but I've not been able to find them anymore. So uh, if you were looking for a pair, of ni a nice pair of desktop computer stands, I would recommend uh, speaker stands from a company called ISO Acoustics. They make really, really awesome stuff. Okay. So anyway, I set my monitor here on this hutch, which is kind of cool. Um, I just had this built online by somebody that makes wood stuff. I had some shelves made for him. I was like, Hey man, can you make me a hutch? And uh, yeah, he was able to. So that's cool. Cause that gives me a little bit of space under here. You know, I don't have any uh, desk drawers, so I don't have a lot of stuff to put, a lot of places to put things, so uh, yeah, that's that. Um, I also use this Razer keyboard. I just got this, so this is the Razer Black Widow. It's not the Chroma, it's just their Stealth Edition. And you, I use the orange keys on it, which are very, very slight feedback. They're supposed to be their silent versions. But yeah, I really like this keyboard a lot. It's been freaking awesome. I actually am still debating if I want to keep this board. It did really make me a better gamer um, consistently. I could definitely tell a, a huge difference, but you know, I, I'm used to wireless keyboard. This is the old Logitech K320. It doesn't feel good at all. These keys are so mushy, especially um, going back to it after testing out all the mechanical keyboards. But I just really, really like the fact that I don't have wires on my desk when, when this is on here. So I don't know. What do you guys think? You think it's worth having a wire? It's kind of, uh, it's not that big of a deal, but. I don't know, it's just not as clean of a look. Okay, then I also, for my mouse, I've used the Logitech. This is the G700. They've updated it with the G700S now. I think it has a newer sensor and it makes it a little bit better, but I've, I've had this for at least five years. I definitely never will use a wired mouse. I don't care how much better people, how much uh, better people think it is, but 
I can't just have a wire coming off the mouse. This is so ridiculous. Um, I know professional gamers use them and stuff. I'm not really a professional gamer, but you know this serves me well. I do want to definitely try a, a wireless optical mouse, so I'm gonna try out the G602. I don't know. I just really like the way this has always felt. It's got back and forward buttons. You can program some stuff on here. But anyway, yeah, that's a G700. That's my mouse. Last quick thing about the the mouse here is uh, using a wireless mouse. Obviously, this takes batteries. So it just takes one single A battery and I use rechargeables if you guys use anything that takes double A batteries on your desk. Uh, what I do is, a cool little tip is I have this charger here with some you know, extra double A batteries to keep this charged up. And I just put some Velcro on the back here and um, that way I keep this charged so when I get a little battery signal I can go ahead and swap the batteries out and um, you know, just stick it underneath the desk so it keeps it kind of convenient. So hopefully that tip maybe helps you guys out. And then I use it on this Razer Specs pad. The reason why I like this is because it's super thin and it provides some gloss here. You can see it comes up off the desk. It's so slightly uh, sticky on the bottom, so you can just lay it flat on there. And uh, it's nice because you don't get a lot of, uh, you know, there's no fall off here like a regular uh, thick mouse pad. And then I can put the, uh, my keyboard over it to get everything kind of uh, squared up and the keyboard's not like sitting up or rocking or anything like that. So that's the Specs pad. It's not as price smooth as some mouse pads. But because of its thinness, that's the reason why I chose that. Uh, just coincidence that the Razer keyboard is also one of my favorites. So what else do we got here? Um, like I said, I mentioned the Hutch before. I use an iPhone 6. That's my main uh, um, phone. I never used Android, but I'm thinking about checking it out just to kind of compare. Because I've had a, I've used iPhones since the first day they came out in 2007. Actually, I remember that day. Got the iPhone, and they congratulate you as if you had a baby when you bought that thing. So that's funny. Um, and then I just have a notebook here, you know, just for keeping notes and stuff, um, whatever. And then I keep a marker board and a marker board uh, eraser here. And that is because I write on my, on my window notes and stuff like that. I'll show you. So you can see I just kind of write notes, stuff I got to do during the day, some goals. And actually there's my first uh, check from Amazon, so pretty happy about that. Not for, not for very much money, I think 500 something dollars, but that's for a six months work, so. And a lot of work doing the YouTube channel. But anyways, thanks a lot for anybody that's bought through my links. I uh, really appreciate you guys, man. Um, hopefully one day I can do this full time. It's kind of my dream. But anyway, yeah, that's all my goals and stuff. So like I said, I just like to have a marker um, kind of just ready to go. So I also have an iPad here. And you can see what I did is I just put a little piece of Velcro here. Uh, soft Velcro, which is like a little sticker. So this speaker stand actually happens to fit my iPad Air Mini, which is really, really cool. So I like to just kind of store it there. And there is an app called uh, Duet, I think, which I just found out about from uh, Dom Esposito's channel. And he said that you can just use, it's a $15 app, unfortunately, but he says you can use it to uh, just use it as a, I'm sure you got to run some piece of software on your computer. I'm going to get it and check it out. And you can just use this as a second screen for your computer, which is pretty cool. One of the things that sucks about my desk um, this is just an IKEA uh, desk, a tabletop I got from IKEA. I really like the simple design. You know, it's just a flat, it's just a rectangular, rectangular desk. Super simple. The downfall of it is I don't really have space for triple monitor setup. As you can see, obviously, when I get a house, I'm going to definitely try to move to a triple monitor setup and get a wider desk. But for now, that's what I have. And unfortunately, you can tell because all my whole side is just one windows in this condo. I have a lot of lighting problems, which you probably see in my videos, and um, you know I apologize for that. But I don't really have room for lighting equipment and stuff in here. But when I do move into a place, finally, I am gonna step up my game. So you guys, hopefully, will uh, stay tuned for that. Also, I have my little Buddha guy that a guy from work gave me. My mom's actually a Buddhist, and this is uh, just a cool little jade statue. I put it up here for you know good luck and remind, just a reminder to be a uh, kind of a good person. Can't forget about the best chair in the world in my opinion the Aeron desk chair it's an expensive chair but you know it's something that you can just have forever I did a full review of that if you guys want to check out all kind of musicians and uh, you know software developers and, and people that sit at their desks for hours a day use this so it's it's an excellent chair you'll see it in a lot of you recognize it from a lot of movies and just um, just from places that care about ergonomics really let's see what else oh couple other last things here is I do use these Logitechs, these are the old G35s. I had to replace the, um, I actually replaced the ear pads on them because they wear out pretty fast. But once I got new ear pads on them, they are like brand new. Um, thanks to my dad for giving me those. I never really used headphones, but 
like I said, I have a small place, and when my girlfriend's sleeping, I have no option but to use those. And uh, it keeps it down. Otherwise, I definitely don't prefer using headphones. I'd rather just, um, you know, game through my regular speakers. You get a lot better sound. And uh, so let's see, this is my computer. I'm going to do a separate build video on this. This is a, it uses the X99 chipset. It's a little bit older. Well, it's a half a generation old now almost. Or if not, a little bit more because they have the new Z170 chipsets. But I do have DDR4 RAM. And um, like I said, I'm going to do a whole complete build video just to give you a sneak peek of it inside there. But yeah, it's really super quiet. I love this computer. I just love building computers as I'm sure most of you guys do too. And this is the old uh, Cooler Master Storm case, Storm Scout, the original one. I love it because it has super thick handles up here. Uh, up, really, really super thick handles to just move it around. It's um, steel, it's not plastic, it's a steel brace inside there. And um, it's a heavy ass case actually, but unfortunately, it's getting a little long in the tooth. I've used this for two builds actually, because I don't like, I wanted to see if I could, you know, build a whole new computer with recycling my old case. And I did, but there are some limitations which I will show you about in the uh, build video but yeah that's it as far as all my equipment like I say I keep it pretty minimal that's about all I have to go over on my desk I should show you guys my uh, cable management which is I just got the IKEA I get this IKEA wire management thing and uh, why I did is I cut out some cardboard here some white uh, cardboard just to kind of place there to hide all the wires behind so I think it does a pretty decent job actually you know if you look behind there it's gonna look like hell but I can show you that but for the most part, you know, you're not gonna, I don't really come over the side and look like this. And I guess I could close it off um, right here, but I keep a drive here I like to pull out. That's my Western Digital. This is a one terabyte external drive. Had that for a while, but I just use it to throw some backup stuff on there. And then I try to keep these wires clean as well. So for what's worth, that's how it looks back here. So that's really it as far as my desk room tour um, for the, those of you all that were interested. And, um, what was I going to say? I shoot everything on a Canon T4i that I picked up from Craigslist. Originally, I had used, and I used a Zoom, a Zoom uh, H1 mic. By the way, I wouldn't recommend that. It, it, it takes one uh, AA battery and it eats batteries like crazy. So, But I probably should have opted to get something a little bit better, higher quality mic. Um, you know, I originally, oh, you just upgrade along the way as you go when you make a YouTube channel. So you kind of just live and learn, I guess. I originally was using the mic on the phone and it picks up a lot of background noise. Then I got that mic on the top, but you know, like I say, it eats up batteries and it's only marginally better than uh, the built-in mic on the camera. But what I did want to show you guys is what I originally first started with on my YouTube channel. My very first video, well, first video that got any decent views, which was I think my third video or something like that, um, was actually an iPhone 6 case review, believe it or not, which is kind of weird. But what I used for that is an old iPhone and uh, I got just a little wide angle lens for it. And that just sits on the end, and then I just got it and set it up on the tabletop here, um, so a wide angle, so I could get everything in the shot when I was reviewing cases up close, because uh, I couldn't really figure out how people were doing unboxings uh, without elaborate setups with cameras pointing straight down. So people have some crazy setups, but I couldn't really figure out a good way to get everything in the shot. So um, that ended up working the wide angle, wide angle, wide angle camera lens, and then I got this uh, Tascam mic. Um, which makes the, because uh, the microphone on this old iPhone that I was using to shoot that video is just mono, so this added the stereo effect. And yeah, I mean, I got like, I think that video has 70,000 some views on it uh, by now, which is kind of crazy just for some random iPhone cases review that I threw together. Uh, but yeah, this is what I originally used for a while until I was like, well, let me go ahead and upgrade a little bit. Found, like I say, I found the Canon T4 on Craigslist for 400 might be able to grab one for like 350 now if you guys want to use it, but you know that's the camera I use pretty good. I wish I had a better lens, I just use the kit lens. Like I say, um, one of my main problems is lighting, but anyways, you guys probably don't care about that. But yeah, that's it, and then I use just like this Joby, uh, this is just a little Joby stand, and I would set that on here, and um, bam, I would, that would be my whole YouTube production, at least when I was doing uh, little things, um, you know, unboxings and stuff that can fit on the desk. I've actually learned a lot from building the YouTube channel. If you guys care at all, you know, I start out with cheap tripods. You don't want to do that. And uh, there's just so many things. You don't want to get a cheap head. You can't really do pans and tilts very smoothly. So I had to go through a couple different heads. Wasted a lot of money. If you're going to be serious about making a YouTube channel, I definitely just kind of suggest, um, you know, working with what you have. But then, you know, as you get a little better, save money to just go ahead and get something 
kind of really good whatever piece of equipment you're looking for. So that's my piece of advice. Anyways, that's it for my full desk setup slash studio slash gaming tour. I uh, hope you guys liked it. If you did, please give a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Anything you want to ask, really. And thanks a lot for watching, you guys. Take care.